Professor Springer here, and I thought I'd uh, show you how I have my students do molar mass, or formula mass, or molecular mass, or it doesn't matter what you call it, you can do the same procedure, it's just what units you use, and uh, depending on how particular your teacher or professor is, on uh, your, the units they want you to use. I always teach it as molar mass, and my units then will be grams per mole. Uh, hopefully you know that a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of anything. And so if you have that many molecules or formula units or atoms or ions, that's one mole. And if you have a mole of them, then, it, then the mass in grams is whatever the number is on the periodic table. So it turns out pretty handy that way. Uh, so uh, here's my two uh, compounds that I'm going to find a molar mass of. They're the ones that I've been using in the lab this series of videos. So uh, first one was the sodium bicarbonate and second one is the citric acid. So what I have my students do, we have the formula and I have them list all of the elements that is in the formula. And then we write down how many of each one there is. We've got one sodium, we've got one hydrogen, we've got one carbon, we've got three oxygens. Then we go to the periodic table. And we look for the, uh, the, uh, the atomic masses of each one of those. Here my sodium is 22.99 grams per mole. And of course the hydrogen is 1.01. .01. Carbon, very important element. 12.01 grams per mole. And oxygen, also important, we use it a lot, 16.00 grams per mole. So once we get those on there, we multiply them together. I get 1 times 22.99 is still 22.99 grams per mole. Could have left myself a little more room. 1 times 1.01, 1 .01, of course, 1.01. 1, .01. 1 times 12.01, 12.01. And 3 times 16.48 grams per mole. You must be careful when you're doing this kind of multiplication. I have gotten pretty good at uh, multiplying by 16, multiples of 16. I could be pretty good after so many years of teaching this. And oxygen being 16.00, a lot of things will have three oxygens or two oxygens or six oxygens or four. And so I've got my 16 math facts down pretty good. But what you got to be careful, if you type that in your calculator, when you type in three times 16.00, it's just going to say 48. It's not going to say 48.00. But to me, those two zeros are important. They were listed on the periodic table. So I'm going to put them on my problem. I'm going to put them everywhere they show up on the problem. Because there's a thing called significant figures, and if your teacher hasn't talked to you about them, they surely will. If you're in college, they definitely will. And so I need to make sure that I keep track of all of my digits that I need. So I'm going to now, I've, I've made my list. I've put my numbers from the periodic table, I multiply them together, I'm going to add those all together, and what I end up with is the 4.01 grams per mole. I take all, when I'm uh, grading how we, a, a calculation of molar mass, I subtract, if they don't put the units, grams per mole on all their numbers, I sub take off ones if they don't put the double zeros, all the zeros that are there, they need them, you don't put them on there, you lose points. That's the way I do it in my lab. Maybe I'm a little too picky. I don't know. But it works out pretty good. If we were doing just one formula unit of the sodium bicarbonate, then instead of grams per mole, this would be the 4.01 of those units. Because that's for one formula unit. You might call it a molecule. You'd be wrong, but you might call it.
The next one here we've got is the citric acid. So again, I'm going to make a list of all my elements. Now, I've got hydrogen showing up two places. I can put it separately or I can put them together. It really doesn't matter. A lot of my students will put them separately since they show up separately in the formula. If you, if you want to do 3, 6, 5, 7, that's fine. If you want to go 8, 6, and 7, that'll work also. But for our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and list them separately. I'm going to find those numbers from the periodic table. They haven't changed. Um, 3 times 1.01 be 3.03. 6 times 12.01 is probably going to be 72.06. And then small 5 times 1.01. And 7 times 16. Add those numbers all together, we get 192.14. And it's just that simple. That's all we have to do. That's all there is to it. Uh, if you've got a problem where, um, where parentheses might be involved, like perhaps you're doing a, uh, oh, I don't know, not a calcium hydroxide. doing a uh, formula like that, just make sure that you realize you've got two O's and two H's when you start the problem. There's the solution to that calcium hydroxide elements. So, not too difficult. If you just pay attention, uh, keep track of things, make sure your decimal points are lined up, or if you're using a calculator, don't forget that those double zeros count. They are important. You need to put them on there, put your units on, and you should be fine. Thanks for watching. See you next time.